Chicago is, and I'm proud of this, an architectural city, not just because of the magnificent buildings we have, but also we have some of the best architects in the world. They are the ones designing these striking buildings that you see in global cities on the planet. I'm going to be talking today about super tall buildings, uh, the sequoias of skyscrapers. The preeminent uh, example has to be the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. No other man-made thing has ever stood so tall. These towering structures are awesome. They're sexy, inspiring, and profoundly complex and difficult to design. And they, in fact, test the limits of what the human mind can conceive and construct. For eight years, Chicago architecture Marshall Strabola was the chief architect of the Shanghai Tower, 121 stories tall, imposing, sustainable. It is designed to stand for 200 years, almost as long as an Optimo hat, if you heard our last segment. Marshall Strabola, congratulations on your work. Is this your masterpiece, or is that until the next big project comes along your table? Well, I, I, I like to think of them as, as my children. You, you can't have a favorite one. You want them all to be oh the best you can yes, be. Yes, that's the answer. Uh, I want to ask you very quickly before we get into Shanghai Tower. One World uh, Trade Center now declared the tallest building in North America, and yet that is because of that very unattractive spire on the top. Uh, doesn't the Sears Tower, sorry for calling it that, have... Oh, I do too. I call it the good Sears Tower you. and will till I die. Mm. <laughs> but that building has heated, ventilated, occupiable space taller than One World Trade Center. Because oh, our spires absolutely. were not c considered part of the original design. Well, well they're not spires. They're now, masts, right? Or no, they're um, broadcast antennas. Yeah. So they're functional. And there's no it's really funny that we don't count something that actually does work. And we count things that are absolutely meaningless. They're uh, but they're also ornamental. Well, if, if I gelled my hair up to a spike and uh, would a mohawk, would I be taller yes. because of that? It's, it's ornamental. The Trump Tower has a spire. That spire has no function other than proportion on the top of the building. Sears Tower, two antennas that generate income, that provide broadcast. Wh wh where does this station broadcast from? Well, top, we no, top of no, Hancock? we're out at uh, Elk Grove Village. Okay, but you, you need an antenna and yes. a mast to actually broadcast, and the top of buildings are very good for that. And so I, and I think it's, ridiculous. it's an outrage that the formula doesn't consider that. Oh, it, it's just uh, myopic, if you want my opinion Good on for it. you. All right. I like you even more. So the Shanghai Tower opens next year. It's got this marvelous corkscrew design. It's quite striking. Uh, what does an architect have to do that's different for something that tall, 121 stories, as opposed to, say, a 50-story uh, building? Uh, the short answer is everything. Everything is different when you start getting that tall. Every single system of the building changes. The structural system changes. The mechanical system changes. The elevatoring system changes. In fact, everything changes. So it's a completely different kind of animal. How does a toilet flush on the 121st floor? How does water get up that well, high? Actually, the, the toilet flush is the same, but you have to have pressure reduction systems because our plumbing pipes only can go about 20 to 30 stories. And then what you have to do is you have to change them with uh, uh, pools and drop them off. So it's not the same static head top So they to have bottom. a tank halfway yeah. up and yeah. something, and they go into that, and then they go from there down to yeah, the Yeah, pressure reduction systems Super that you normally wouldn't know to put in a building. And if you don't know that, you get into problems. The plumbing starts breaking because the buildings move. That was a classic problem when skyscrapers started in Chicago. The plumbers didn't have the technology to keep up with a building that moves. The taller the building is, the more it moves. I think the Hancock moves about half a meter in each direction. How about the Hancock in Boston, the I.M. Pay building? Oh, that yeah, the, the windows would up. pop up yeah, all the time yeah. because they didn't uh, uh, take into effect the structural form moving in the wind. Yeah, well, they did, but it was more of a problem moving in the long direction rather than the thin oh. direction. All the engineering was to make the thin part of the building strong and the long part of the building they oh, thought they had. Interesting. And when it moved in that direction, it created what was called a second order effect. And the shape of the windows, which were vertical, were now moving this way. And that they'd pop they out. They popped out. And so they had to put a big pendulum damper or something up there yeah, on the top. Yeah, it's to called a tune mass damper. Yeah. And uh, I you took know a, this stuff. You no, know, no, I took a class from the engineer who designed the tune mass dampers in buildings. The first one, uh, Bill Measure. He passed mm -hmm. away several years well, ago. you have to take that into account, too, even yeah. for spire-like buildings. The oh, wind yeah. Has a, 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 in Shanghai, oh, wind you have is phenomenal winds there. Wind is the governing factor when it comes to tall buildings. Um, earthquakes are usually much less of an impact on a tall building. The wind has a huge impact. And in the Shanghai Tower, the spiral, the twisting 
reduces the wind loads 28 percent so f you're going by the uh, form follows function absolutely absolutely form is a function of function <laughs> and and you know if if you could look at architecture two ways. We, we could design buildings like the one we're in, which is a gorgeous building of its time. It is a deco building with some of the best stonework you've ever seen on the planet. But we don't do that today. We don't build buildings like that today. The walls are very thick, masonry bearing structure. We, we do very thin skins today. And the shape of the building should follow its function. Mm. And if you don't, you don't get built. How, how many buildings in the world are built that are over 400 meters? I'm sorry, 600 meters is about 2,000 feet, which is the limit in the United States. FAA limits buildings to 2,000 yeah, feet. And one How many buildings thing. over 400 meters? Uh, there's, a, well, the Dubai That are built one. in today, yeah. Um, the Hancock, I think, is 350, 340. Sears Tower is 440 meters to the roof. How many buildings of that height are built in the world today? Yeah. L less than 15. This is a rarity. This does not happen very often. How did you? How did it come uh, to you to do the design? Um, actually, usually by accident. Is uh, it who you know? Luck, chance, timing? I think all of the above. I worked for uh, S O M here in Chicago for Skidmore, uh, Owings and Merrill. Who did? I was hired by Bruce Graham, who did the Sears Tower and the John Hancock, and we started doing buildings. And I don't think a building should be measured by how tall it is. Mm -hmm. I think a building should be measured by how good it is. But that's a subjective point. Exactly, and. When you're in the race to be the world's tallest, you're only the tallest for a short amount of time. How would you like to be Taipei 101, which was the tallest building for the shortest amount of time? But I'd like to be the Giza uh, Pyramid. How short was that? Oh, it's 509 meters. But how short was its record? Oh, I don't know, a year, year and a yeah. half, two years, oh, the something Petronas like that. Towers in Kuala Lumpur? Are 442. Mm -hmm. The tip of those spires are about 10 feet higher than the roof of the Sears Tower. But if you put those two next to each other, since we don't count antennas. Yeah, you would think the Sears Tower would be the tallest yeah, building. It, it's the, the rules that exist today are rather silly. So what was the order uh, when the, the commission came? What, what oh. did the uh, Chinese developer want? Well, actually, it was funny. They wanted the tallest building in the world. And I had spent three years working on the Burj Khalifa with SOM. So I knew we were 828 meters tall for that building. They said they wanted to do a building 580 meters tall. And it's going to be the world's tallest building. And I told them, no, it's not. You're not even close. And they said, what do you mean? And I showed them what we were doing on the Burj. And they said, oh, OK. But that's OK. We'll, we'll keep going with it. But the Shanghai Tower was part of a master plan from the mid-'80s. So they were going to do three super tall buildings. That's the model I brought in there, those yeah, three towers. You cannot, well, you could were, see were that. If somebody's watching on WGenerator.com and is clicking the watch button, you can actually see that over there next to me. And the tall yellow one is uh, the Shanghai Tower. His tower. And that was a master plan from the mid-'80s. So they not a three single building, tall. but a collection. A collection of buildings. And the owner said, well, this is my gift to the people of Shanghai. And think about the three buildings as a collection of buildings. We, we want harmony among the three buildings. So what I told them is what we're going to do is w Jin Mao was designed by another Chicago architect, Adrian Smith, is about China's past. It's a stainless steel pagoda. And then the WFC, or the bottle opener, was designed <laughs> by is there a some, uh, New York architect. Do you have a little uh, resentment there? Or no, is actually, I don't. You, like you call I it the bottle opener? I, well, you know, when something has a nickname, people yeah, have engaged it. It's like Cloudgate, it. we know as the bean. You know, exactly, so sure exactly. Um, I like the bottle opener better than Jin Mao. I think Jin Mao is kind of a one-liner. It's a stainless steel pagoda. It's a, a Western architect's idea of what a Chinese person would like. Whereas Mori hired a New York architect and um, the bottle opener is, I think, a very exquisite building. It's not a Chinese building. It's a Japanese building. Okay, I'm moving it now. If you can hear my voice, oh, I just knocked over the bottle opener. No, it's okay. Okay, so go ahead. And so the bottle opener is about China's present, which is accepting foreign investment. And it's a foreign developer, a Japanese developer, and a New York architect, KPF, uh, Bill Penderson. And... It was the next highest at 492. And the Shanghai Tower is about China's future. So we have past, present, and future in the collection oh of three nice. buildings, which is a transparent building. It's the world's tallest double skin building. So there's an inside skin, and then there's a space of sometimes 30 feet, and then a second skin. So we have these atriums. There's 27 atriums that go up the building. But that would be seen by many as like wasted space. It's absolutely not wasted. In fact, it functions with how the building works. It's like wearing a jacket. 
when it's hot outside, you take the jacket off. It's a beautiful, beautiful autumn day here in Chicago. You don't even need a jacket in the sun. But you go into the shade, you need a jacket. So the double skin acts like a thermos bottle. You remember those when you were a kid? Yeah, yeah, the glass. You, uh, it kept liquids cool in the summer, mm, and it kept mm. liquids soups warm in the winter. Was that proven, or is this the first building in the world no, to do that? No, double skin buildings have been around for 30 years. So this is the one that was done on the biggest scale. This will be the world's tallest double skin building. Marshall Strabola is the architect, the chief architect of the uh, Shanghai Tower. More conversation with you in just a sec, okay? Sure. Marshall Strabola is a fine architect based here in Chicago, but he's spending a lot of time these last few years, these last eight years, in Shanghai because he is the chief architect of the Shanghai Tower, and you're mighty proud of that. Oh, yeah. What's it like standing on the top and looking out and knowing this space you're standing on, this beautiful space, came from your mind? Oh, it's very humbling. It's, 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 it's an incredible feeling. Did the developer buy the design right away, or was there a lot of give and take? Well, it was a competition. It was an international competition. There were about 12 or 13 buildings that were submitted, and this was the one that was selected. Now, you talked about the double skin. That's a component of the sustainable features there. There are others. Yeah. Oh, there's everything about the building was designed with sustainability in mind. I think we as architects use more energy than any other group on the planet. <laughs> Half of the energy produced on this planet is used in buildings. So we as architects have a responsibility to design buildings that use less energy so as a goal. It's more than just LED lights. Oh, yeah. L actually, LED lights are very good, and but it's, it's very complicated. It's not just one thing. There's no silver bullet. It's being better every time you design a building. Mm -hmm. This building is better than the last one we did, and the one we're going to do next year is better than this one. In what ways? Uh, we're using better systems, we're using less energy, we're finding that the second generation elevators. And the way we design the elevator system in this building is we use a lot of sky lobbies. So we go from the ground floor to the 60th floor as one stop. And we could use that elevator like a generator in a car to generate power. But if we're only going from the first to the second floor, we can't generate any power. But we can generate a lot of power going from zero to 60 and from 60 to zero. And we have five big sky lobbies in this building. And these sky lobbies do double duty. They actually reduce the amount of traffic that the lunchtime crowd takes to go to the bottom of the building because I put restaurants on mm. the 50th floor, the 60th floor. So if 5% of the people in the building, in the office population, go down to the amenity floor for lunch rather than the ground floor, I save a million elevator trips a year. So we're, we're trying to think about how people use the building to use less energy. We're trying to organize the building in such a way that we use less material because the most sustainable thing we could do is not build it. Yeah. So the building shape is the smallest perimeter for the most area. A circle gives you the smallest perimeter of the most area. If you did a square building like the John Hancock, we'd have 22% more exterior wall on the building. More exposed space. So geometry yeah. plays a big part yeah. in it. Why aren't there more buildings like this being built in the United States? Is it because of, of the money factor? Well, it's return on the money factor. Uh, a standard developer in the U.S. will look at a return of five years. The Shanghai Tower is an asset that's going to be held for hundreds of years. So they're not looking to make a fast buck. What they're looking at is to make the most energy efficient building they can over a hundred year cycle. Whereas in the U.S. a developer needs to be able to sell the building in five years in case things happen. There needs to be an exit strategy but to it. But in this China building, what's their time horizon? Um, there is none. This, this building will last forever. Maybe we'll change the exterior wall in 100 years, but the idea is this building will last as long as it can. And so they're looking for not a five-year payback. They're looking for, in terms of what, hundreds of years? The mechanical system on the Shanghai Tower will pay for itself. The double skin will pay for itself in, we estimate, about 12, 13 years. And then you see big saving kicking in. Energy costs will always go up in the future. So what we're paying for the same amount of energy today will double in 20 years. So anything we could do today to reduce energy consumption is worthwhile. Yeah. Now, a developer in Chicago, like the Trump Tower, that is sold off. It's residential units. It's not owned by the development group. It's owned by the individual owners. The hotel may be owned so by the, the Trump group. the whole model is different. The whole model is different. Yeah. And you have to look at, is the building being designed for 100 years, or is it being designed for five years? Marshall Strabola, thank you so much. If you're watching us on the Internet, it's this building that he designed. But I recommend Googling it, Shanghai Tower, S-H-A-N-G-H-A-I, 
and take a look at it. It's a magnificent building, and it opens next year. Yes. Uh, and you'll be there for the great un unraveling? Uh, we hope so. Good for you. Thanks so much for coming in. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you for having me.